Welcome to the Hollywood Scholar. I'm Jed Morgan, and I just finished episode five of House of the Dragon. And I gotta say, I was supremely disappointed with this one. I honestly think it's the worst of the series so far. There wasn't anything offensively bad in it per se, but there was nothing good to really latch on to besides the ending, really. It was really just bland, a very bland experience. I haven't felt this way about the series since episode one. So I very much feel it is the worst of the series so far. Very little characters develop, not really anything has moved to Lord plot-wise beyond a single thing that could take about 15 minutes of screen time and most other scenes could be cut entirely and not really affect anything. They really rehash quite a bit of the information that we knew previously from the other episodes that it just feels like wasted time and wasted space and there weren't really any performances that really stood out this time because they weren't really given anything. Like Patty Constantine, he'd been really great these last couple episodes especially, but this one he seemed average at best because he really didn't do anything but look sick all the time, and that's not really enough for an actor to really build upon and make something a special performance out of. Even Matt Smith was in the episode very little. Of course, the two times he was allowed to speak, they were the best parts of the episodes without question, especially his conversation with his cousin Royce from the Vale. But I will be getting into a few more spoilers here, very minor, so spoiler alert. This episode really doesn't do much besides King goes and asks if his daughter can marry the sea snake's son. They say yes, they have a party, and someone dies at the party, so they rush the wedding. That, that that's about it. I mean, Allison finds out about the affair that Sir Kristen Cole and Rhaenyra had last episode and is really upset about that, but that's really all that really develops from the previous episodes and doesn't really change much, at least from what we're aware of. There weren't really any interactions between the actors or characters that I felt like were really impactful or meaningful, advancing their characters in any way, deepening our understanding of them. Overall, it was just really, really boring. And boring is, of course, a very subjective term, but I was really checking my phone a lot. I was really distracted through a lot of it, and that hasn't happened for me in House of the Dragon so far. It was really incredibly disappointing, and the repeated information is something that really, really bothered me. They had conversations that we've had previously without any exceptional dialogue or a good reason to be repeating the information. And there was even a moment where they did the classic, hey, actors tell each or characters tell each other things that they previously knew for the audience's sake doesn't necessarily make sense for the two brothers to react so heavily to Allison's dress being green and then tell each other that they know green is uh, act of war for her family which is immediately undone when she goes off the main table to greet her uncle and the entire family is wearing green and they hadn't communicated they're not they are not aware of the situation, and no one reacted to them wearing green when they first arrived. So it, it seems like they just wanted a cool moment where the, the cripple guy leans to his brother and says, Ooh, she's declaring war by wearing green. But everyone else is wearing green, so this is nonsense. I really, really despise that moment quite heavily. That was one of the worst parts of the episode. And honestly, I, I may even dislike this episode. I know I said at the beginning that it was inoffensive, and that's true. But boring is a type of offense in this situation so maybe it is offensive a few positives before we wrap it up because there's just so little here to talk about but a few positives i did like how the tea came back from the last episode it just showed up in renera's room from the grand maester and they cut it and it made it seem like hey she needs to have this moon tea you know to deal with the repercussions it's basically westerosian plan b and they were very subtle about its introduction and acted like it wasn't a big deal later, but a lot of people speculated that that was Moon Tea, and it turns out we were correct. It is the plan B of Westeros, and it did play into this episode a little bit more than was expected because the cripple was really manipulating people like Varys. Like, that one conversation he has with Alicent near the Wormwood is actually one of my favorite parts of the episodes besides the Matt Smith portion because he's really manipulating her, and he's doing quite a good job at it, acting all innocent like he's just worried about Rhaenyra being sick but he actually knows that it's moon tea and how that'll affect Allison when she finds out that was a bit of a really good performance and some neat writing and really the only point of the writing that I can really praise for this episode so the tea coming back and how it incorporated with the cripple and Allison was very very interesting and there there was a joke that did kind of make me smile it was in the conversation between Rhaenyra and her soon-to-be husband when they were talking about like skirting around the fact that he was gay using the metaphor of roasted chicken and geese and she said uh, geese was too greasy for her meaning women were too greasy for her so 
I, I thought that was a pretty funny deal, you know. I, I thought that was really funny, but that might just be my childish humor at play. Now, the final thing that I really liked about this episode was the fight sequence which took place at the end of the episode, which incited them to rush the marriage between Sir Christian Cole and the boyfriend of Rhaenyra's new husband. And it was just very brutal, very brutal. And you kind of were like trying to figure out what's going on. They kept it away from it. So you didn't know who was fighting. And I, I did enjoy how they were shooting it. So you weren't really sure. The logistics of it don't particularly make much sense to me because, you know, Sir Christian Cole was up near the table by that column when he was talking to the boyfriend. So why didn't the fight break out there? Why did they randomly go to the bottom of the dance floor all across the other end of the room from where they were initially talking? And why did that happen to break out just right next to Damon and Rhaenyra clouding the king's vision while he was really concerned about them talking to each other? It seems very odd that that happened and not explained whatsoever. So fight sequence, cool, set up poorly. And just seeing the guy's head getting caved in, it was in a impressive practical effects they used for that guy's head being smashed in and so Kristen Cole I think of the supporting characters he gave the best performance in this one between his conversation with Renee on the boat and some of his sequences with Allison I think he's he's the only person who I can say is developed at all and it's really not in any way that you wouldn't expect like there wasn't anything surprising about his character it was just the basics and you know, in, in a better episode, it would be a good part of it, but when it's the best part of it, it kind of brings down the whole episode as a whole because this generic basic thing is the best part of it is really incredibly sad. And as I mentioned earlier, Matt Smith is always bringing his A-game despite being in the episode very little and saying even less. The one conversation he had with his cousin Royce was an interesting one about like, hey, uh, I'm the heir of the veil. You're going to give me what I want. And he did it in a very interesting way. I love Matt Smith. He is really great even in this episode. But overall, this is clearly to me the worst episode of the series so far and doesn't bode well for next week when the actor swap happens for Rhaenyra and Alicent and they do the massive, massive time jump. Really not looking forward to that. That's really what hangs on this show's quality if I'm going to say it's good or not and if this episode wasn't good even before that that does not bode well for the series as a whole that's kind of where I left it off I'm going to give this episode a five out of ten just kind of there inoffensive still still I think that's a proper way to put it overall just really incredibly disappointing but anyway that's all I have for today I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video anon If you like what I do here and want to see good, compelling stories that Hollywood will no longer give you, check out my book series, Odyssey of a Phoenix, a mythological epic about philosophy, morality, and modern-day mental illness issues. Books 1, Down in Flames, and Book 2, Apocalypse Then, currently on sale. Book 3, Kill the Dark, coming soon.